Hey there! We have new developments. I have a tiny mic now, as you may have seen from the shorts. Maybe you haven't. Anyway, today's video is very exciting. It's very fun. Listening to certain types of music can become a whole experience. The first time I listened to the new Mitski album, I was on the highway. I was on my way home from school, and it was in the middle of the night. So you can imagine, I was in the back seat. Everywhere I see is just dark. I have my headphones in. I'm listening to the first track, and I'm like... Oh my god. <laughs> it was absolutely the perfect opportunity to listen to the album the whole way through and when I tell you, I could have cried. But I contained myself and here we are now. <laughs> it was a very out of body moment for me. <laughs> and since then, I've thought about a lot of books and also read a lot of books that remind me of the kind of feeling that was generated from listening to that album at that specific moment in time. And I will be talking about all of those books today. I'll show you if I can just lift them up. I have five books that I'm going to recommend to you that I feel like fit the Mitski album very well and I'm also going to talk about a few other books that I've just finished recently and I would like to talk about too. The first book that I'm going to talk about is actually something I read a few months back. I'm not sure if I've talked about it on this channel before, but I felt it was very fitting to talk about this book first because it's the first thing that I think about whenever I recall this album. It's just uncanny how similar the experience of reading this book is to the experience of listening to Mitski. And that book is Greek Lessons by Han Kang, aka one of my favorite books of all time. I'm just gonna keep the summaries very brief. This book is about two people we cross between their perspectives. So first is a woman who has lost her voice and our second protagonist is her Greek lessons professor who is slowly losing his sight. I associate this book especially with the songs The Frost and When Memories Snow. My god. In general, this book is just very similar to those two songs but the latter half in particular as well as the ending are very, very similar in feeling. Because what this book does quite well is its imagery. There are a lot of books that like to go on and on about certain descriptions like for example with settings. They love to go on and on about those stuff without really adding anything to the book or to the experience of reading it but I feel like this book was written so well in that sense. Every single description of setting added so much to the experience. It just made you feel like you were in the world. It's so poetic how she writes yet also very straightforward and very easy to understand which I I appreciate. I'm not going to spoil you but what I've thought about at least once a month since I finished this book is the ending. I am very picky when it comes to endings. Usually I like to skip them because I don't really see how they contribute anything to the story. I just feel like they're all very predictable but with this one I didn't want the ending to end. I loved it. I love how she did it because it was so atmospheric and that picture is so deeply embedded in my mind. As I said, I think about it at least once a month. The second book I feel is very similar to the single track which is My Love Mine All Mine. I've talked a lot about this book across all my social channels so you probably wouldn't be surprised that I'm talking about it here again. Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. It may seem strange that I'm relating it to My Love Mine All Mine because it isn't really a romance book. Ultimately, this book is about friendship but there is a sliver of romance in this book and let me tell you that sliver... <laughs> I grieved. I mourned. <laughs> Reading the romance in this book is sort of like taking a multivitamin. In just a small pill, you get everything you need and more. I will never stop recommending and raving about this book till the day that I die, till everybody on this earth has read it. I loved it, so you should read it too. <laughs> the third book is also similar to My Love Mine All Mine. I don't have it as a physical copy, so I'll just put the cover up here. It's Sirens and Muses. This book is angsty. <laughs> Typical depressed art students in a liberal art school. <laughs> that sounds kind of morbid, but it's basically what it is. <laughs> this is about a sapphic relationship, which... I don't think we get enough sapphic representation in the dark academia sphere because this book is a dark academia book. It's very similar to These Violent Delights slash If We Were Villains in terms of aesthetics and atmosphere, but it's not the same story. And actually, the sapphic relationship that I'm talking about isn't exclusively a sapphic relationship. It's actually a love triangle between two girls and this one guy. I like to count that guy out. Actually, I like to count all the men out of the story whenever I think about it because I don't think they 
they were needed. I think they could have never been put into the story and it would have been a much better story. That book, Sirens and Muses, isn't exactly my favorite because my one complaint is it wasn't lesbian enough. But it does have that same vibe as My Love, Mine, All Mine because the few romance scenes that we did get between our two girls, they were kind of magnificent. Someone said, you're gay. Yeah, I am very happy. The next book I can finally hold up, it's The Captain's Verses by Pablo Neruda. This is my first Neruda book. If you don't know, Pablo Neruda is very famous, prolific, infamous even in the sphere of love poems. Just a disclaimer, I know somebody will probably think or maybe comment that Neruda is a controversial man. I don't know much about what went down in his life, but I do know that something did happen. I'm not too aware of the facts and the details, so take this recommendation with a grain of salt. However, as controversial as he may have been, this man could write. <laughs> this is just a short collection dedicated to his wife at the time. Again, it's a My Love, Mine, All Mine book because duh, it's love poems. This was so... On multiple occasions, I had very audible, very visceral reactions to reading some of these poems. What I love about his poems is that he's a very straightforward and easy writer. It's not difficult to understand his poems at all because he doesn't go into the abstract. And while that may make his poetry seem a little juvenile or amateur, especially compared to a lot of today's modern poets, I think that his veering away from abstraction actually adds a lot more to his poems. The simplicity of his language just makes it so much easier to relate to the emotions. There were some poems in this that I found to be a little aggressive, which was kind of questionable. But for the most part, I really love this collection. I highly recommend if you're just getting into poetry, it's a very easy entry into it. Next is not a My Love Mine All Mine book. It's an I Don't Like My Mind book. <laughs> this is A Days of Abandonment by Elena Ferrante. This is is my introduction to this author and I don't think I could have chosen a better book to start her with. If you listen to I Don't Like My Mind, you probably have an idea as to what this book is going to be like. The premise sounds very ordinary. It's about a woman and her two kids who get abandoned by the husband who leaves them for a younger girl. So when you just listen to that summary alone, it sounds kind of boring. Not that I'm disregarding those kinds of experiences, but I'm just saying those types of stories could be very lackluster if done wrong but this was done correctly. I find it very hard to describe this book. The only way I feel I can give it justice is by comparing it to the movie Possession. That film was insane. Reading this book feels like watching that movie. If you also read a lot of contemporary women's fiction, I feel like this can also be seen as similar to Otessa Moshveg's books. One difference that I do think this has to her books is that out of all the Moshveg books I have read, I have never encountered one that met my expectations. They were never as crazy and as unhinged as I wanted them to be, but this exceeded my expectations completely and it's just very short which I like. I've been into very short books these days because they're the only thing I have time for and apparently that was the last of the Mitsuki recommendations. Now we go into some of the other books I've finished recently. Here they are. I'm not going to go into too much detail about them. I'm just going to say very brief descriptions as well as my rating. We start with The Heart of a Dog which is a Russian classic I believe or a German classic. It was not my cup of tea. I'm starting to realize I don't like political classics that much, so I just gave it three stars. Next is Love Theoretically by Ali Hazelwood, which I absolutely love. It was such a redemption from the Steminist novellas. It just revived me. Five stars, of course. Next is The White Book by Han Kang, who is the same author behind Greek Lessons, which we talked about earlier. This didn't meet my expectations as to what it was going to be. It's a collection of prose, so it's not a novel, but it does relate to a lot of the themes in Greek Lessons, so if you're going to read Greek Lessons, I don't recommend reading this first. First, it's better to go into that book without any preconceived notions, so this might ruin the experience for you. I give this three stars. Next is The Wall of Winnipeg and Me by Mariana Zapata. This was a reread, to be honest. I just bought this because I like the cover, and I've never had a Mariana Zapata book in my possession. I maintain that Colty and All Roads Lead Here are the superior Zapata books. Three stars. Next, I read They're Going to Love You by Meg Howery. I picked this book up on accident. If you saw my little short, you'd know the little story. It's sort of like a contemporary book about family, ballet. I don't know how to describe it, but I absolutely love 
love this book unexpectedly the writing to me is so good and so gripping it really places you in the world so i give this five stars who would have thunk and my most recent read and the last book we're going to talk about is love on the second read by mika de leon this was sent to me as an arc can't believe I'm saying that. So I'm very thankful to have been given this copy. This is in the same realm as Beach Read, Book Lovers, The Hating Game. It's about two rival editors in the publishing industry. The positives I will say is that I kind of giggled. <laughs> I giggled on multiple instances. However, some of the qualms is that I felt like it lacked a little bit of nuance, especially with how short it is. I feel like I didn't really get to know the protagonists or the main characters as well as I could have. And I also felt that things moved kind of fast. I would have liked a little bit more tension, especially since this is supposed to be an enemies to lovers romance. But overall, I liked it. I gave it three stars. This is also one of the most vibrant covers I've ever seen in my life. So that is it for all the things I've read all the miscue recommendations if you have any other books that you think fit the concept of the album i'd love to hear them please comment them down below anyway that is all for this video very short i've been thinking very long and hard about what other videos i can do because i think youtube is in a little bit of a idle dead space to say the least for the meantime if you see me disappear on the long form space i'm probably on shorts and on Instagram. That's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great week ahead. Goodbye.